All right, guys, your favorite grumpy IT guy is back and sort of continuing on the uh, topic of privacy and security, especially regarding uh, on the mobile phone. Uh, we're going to dive into some free and open source apps that you can use as replacements to what you currently uh, might have on your phone. This is really for people that have Android devices because with iOS, you can't really do anything. You're really locked into that ecosystem. But at least with Android, there are some ways to get out of it and there are uh, some alternatives. If you followed my video on installing Graphene OS on your phone, now that you have a privacy respecting OS installed on your phone, you don't wanna just start installing the same applications like you know the regular Facebook app, Instagram app, Gmail app, you know whatever you might use to consume media. If we install these type of app applications back onto our phone, we might have circumvented Google from collecting data from us, but the applications that we install on our phone still can. We wanna take a look at alternatives, free and open source software alternatives, or FOSS is the, the uh, common term used. In many cases, this is possible, but you will need to change your habits and expectations. You need to understand that many of the popular social and messaging apps provide quick access and convenience, but sacrifice privacy. Let me show you what I mean. Let's use the Instagram app, for example. Checking out the Aurora store, we can see that Instagram uses modules such as Facebook ads and obviously the Facebook login mechanism. So there's no surprises here. If we take a look at app permissions, we see all the permissions that it requires to give you the full experience. Now, if you're an Instagram user and want to use it, and all the features, you'll need to allow all these permissions on your phone. And if you're comfortable giving up such access, like such examples as record audio, access precise locations, etc., then that, then great. My purpose here is to highlight the anti-privacy features from a well-known company that profiles your habits and injects ads based on them. And who knows what else they might be doing. This negates much of the point of de-googling yourself. We need to look at removing all data collecting apps at least as much as feasible. Now you may have Lineage or Graphene OS installed on your phone, and depending on if you have MicroG installed, what's MicroG? Well, MicroG is a, is a free and open source replacement for Google Play services, the proprietary software from Google loaded onto the phone. Many apps, even free and open source apps, may require or still depend on Google Play services to be installed for features such as notification, location, maps, and other features. So without MicroG installed, the features on certain apps may vary. For example, I don't have MicroG installed on my phone. This means that for Signal, for example, it must always be running in the background to check for messages as typically it would rely on Google push notifications modules in, uh, that get installed from Google Play services. For me, I don't see too much of a battery issue keeping Signal running in the background, so I'm okay with it. You may notice for many apps that if Google services aren't installed, it could be a barrier to overcome with some apps. Okay, so we're gonna use Instagram as an example here. So we still want to view and post to Instagram. Well, we're in luck. Apps such as Barinsta give us the ability to do so while giving as much privacy as possible. You can see in the app's description, it only uses the bare essential permissions. And you can take a look at the screenshot here. And once we have the app installed, we can go in and even more granularly restrict permissions with this app. Now, let me expand on what I mentioned earlier about changing your habits. Typically with Instagram, you would receive notifications about your contacts posts or updates directly from the notification bar, etc. Here's where we need to do some work ourselves and manage expectations. First, don't expect things to always work without problems. These developers dedicate their time for free and help the free and open source community. After all, in this case, it's Instagram. What's the worst that can happen? You might miss a picture of someone's lunch. Second, with the case of Barinsta, it does not require MicroG or Google Play services to be installed for notifications. What it does is it refreshes or pulls for updates meaning that you need to trigger the poll of your profile by opening the app and manually checking your feed. This is what I mean by habits. And for me, this is a much better way of consuming content when I want it, when I have time. It's much less distracting to my daily work habits. I don't have random notifications going off on my phone and then getting distracted and checking for them and trying to get back to what I was doing. And when you pair this up with multiple apps, this can become a real distraction. For me, it actually ends up working better it may or may not for you, it depends on what you're used to. 
But now that I'm in control of my viewing and consuming habits as it should be, we have successfully replaced Instagram with a free and open source alternative. And I have more control and I have more privacy. In the next video, I'll be tackling replacing Gmail with a free and open source alternative. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this episode and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.